Okay, so let's switch now to Vivado and here we'll create a new project and let's call it Symbol Mapping. Okay. And it's an RTL project. We don't want to add uh, any source files for now. No IPs, no constraints. The board, I'm going to pick arbitrarily one here that I have, but it doesn't matter right now. We are not going to program the board for now, okay? So just pick one and, and let's use Vivado to simulate our VHDL code, okay? All right, let's wait. Okay, now that the project is created, we will add a source. Let's create a new one, create file. Choose VHDL here for the file type and let's use the same name, QEM for mapper, okay? Let's hit finish. Now let me copy all of those lines and use them directly on Vivado. Yes. Okay. Okay, so now I copy all of the content here. And at this point, I should check the syntax. All right, let me check here. So, Vivalo says that we have a syntax error. Okay, let's check the messages. So, syntax error near the parentheses. Okay, let's take, take a look at this. All right, so here we have an extra comma. Let, let's remove that. The last element shouldn't have a comma in this array, okay? So, let me copy that. All right, it seems that, it seems to be correct. Now, we need to implement a brief test bench, okay? So, we need to code a test bench in VHDL so that we can test the module that we have just developed, okay? So, I'm gonna do it right here and let me create a new file. Let's call it symbol map in loopback test bench test bench dot phd okay so uh, in the beginning we need the library the libraries that we use okay and let's define again an entity entity sim map test bench Okay, is yes. uh, okay and entity. So we don't need any input or output ports in the entity because that's the test page. Okay, but in in the architecture, yes, we need all of the code that will simulate the the, the module. Okay, so architecture behavioral of is and begin and architecture okay um let me copy the entity from the qem format per no. copy and paste it right here and the difference is that when we instantiate an entity the the, the syntax is a little bit different so what we need is first a label let's let's say QEM mapper instance, that's going to be our label. And, uh, okay, all right. So this syntax says that we are instantiating a QEM4 mapper, the model that we have developed, and it is in a library called work. Okay, so Vivada is going to find this model by looking into this library, which by default has the name work, okay? And here is just a label, all right? We'll see how this label appears in, in the simulation environment later. And when we, when we instantiate, we don't need this AND clause here, but in, in the port clause, we need it to, to be a port map, okay? It's a little bit different. That's, that's VHDL, that's how it is, okay? And here, we don't need uh, the columns. We actually need to map those uh, interfaces, input and output interfaces, choose signals, okay? So, 
Um, now we, we need to generate a string of bits to be passed as input to this model, okay? And the way we're gonna do that this is by having a counter. So our counter is going to be a synchronous uh, block, all right? So it's gonna count every time the clock ticks. And therefore, we of course need a clock. So let's define a constant and say clock period. And the, the, the type of this variable is going to be the type of time, okay? And we're going, to, we're going to define it as 10 nanoseconds. That's our clock period, and that's equivalent to 100 megahertz, okay? And we also have a signal called clock, and that signal is going to be of type SD logic. All right. And now we define the processes for clock and reset generation okay so let's use a process clock gen process begin and process all right and what we what we need to do here is we say that clock is zero until wait for clock period over two and after this period of clock period over two clock the signal clock a standard logic signal becomes one and after that we wait another half of clock period all right and the process is not um, a standard uh, a conventional synthesizable process that's that's a process aimed to be used for the simulation environment and what it does here is it repeats that forever. So zero, wait for clock period two, then becomes one, wait for another half period and goes back to zero, to one and so on and so forth. Okay. For the reset, let's use a process begin and process again. And we wanna have a reset, um, as one right in the beginning. So reset is active right when we start the simulation, okay? And we wait, for example, about two clock periods. And after that, our reset signal is going to be deasserted. So we need to define here a signal, signal reset. All right, and that's going to be, again, a standard logic. Oh, notice one thing, here clock should be a zero between single columns okay that's that's the representation of a zero as a standard logic all right if we had zero like this we would be representing an integer all right but for a standard logic we need this okay so that seems to be okay and now we need to implement the counter, okay? Um, two bit counter, and let's define a signal called two bit count, and that's going to be an unsigned, of course, of two bits, one down to zero, okay? And now what else, I think, what we need here is a count proc is going to be a process begin and process now this process here is going to represent an, a a register right so it has a sensitivity list and this sensitivity list has both the clock and the reset signals okay both then pass both the clock and reset signals to the sensitivity sensitivity list okay all right so whenever this register resets if reset equal to one then what we do is our account is reset to zero so we use this clause here 
which is very useful. We say all others, all bits in this group of bits are going to be made equal to zero in this case. Else if rising edge of clock then okay. So what what do we do whenever the clock ticks? We increment the clock time, okay? So that's the count plus one. Alright. Uh, we can actually uh, define a a signal called TX bits and these bits are going to be uh, to come from from the, this counter here but they are a standard logic vector why do we need a standard logic vector because that's the input at our QOEM mapper block okay so bits in is a standard logic vector so one down to zero okay and then we use the TX we say that TX bit equals to this unsigned unsigned number here or oh, unsigned group of bits okay and we need to convert that to a standard logic vector using that so then we can use our TX bits here all right and that's that is going to be the transmitter QAM mapper block okay so now we already have our uh, our input bits here and we just need to observe the the symbols that come out of the QAM mapper let's leave these signals open for now and let's let's check in Vivado whether our syntax is correct so let me switch to Vivado again and now I'm going to create a test bench or simulation source. Okay. And add files. Oops, not add files. Create file. So choose VHDL again. And let me. Okay. Finish. Okay. Okay, yes. Now I'm going to copy all of the code to this test bench here. Let's see. Okay, again we have syntax error, right? So passing VHDL. Okay. Syntax error file ended before end of clause. Okay, let's check that. And no, that's wrong here. So we have end architecture. That's wrong. We should be we should have and behavioral, all right? That's one error. Let's check any more errors. Mm. Well, it seems to be fine. So now we will hit run simulation and maybe a couple of more errors appear. Let's, let's check, one behavioral simulation. No, actually it did not give any error. All right, so we are ready to simulate. Let's uh, expand here and choose the signals that we wanna, wanna take a look. So if we open here our scope and our objects, we can actually choose the signals that we wanna see in this waveform window, okay? So I'm not very interested in the clock and reset signals, or maybe let, let's just leave them here. And, but what we, I really want to see is the transmit bits okay and I want to use them as a binary waveform okay so I go here in radix and choose binary I want to see them as binary numbers okay and here in the QAM mapper instance and notice here that's the label that we we we, we wrote in in the code okay so here when we wrote this label that's exactly the label that appears in Vivado all right so here I'm gonna pick the, the output symbols and I'm, I want to see them as 
sign of numbers. So in radix, I'm gonna I'm gonna use real settings and choose fixed point, sign it, and that's it. Binary point is zero because we don't have any fractional part in this fixed point number. It's all integer, but a signed integer. Okay. Good. In addition to that, let me see. Oh, I think I think we are fine. Let me remove that. And now I expand. We can actually save this waveform as just so we have it next time. And let's see, let's simulate, for example, 500 nanoseconds. Okay, let's see it. All right. Okay. Oh, it seems that our transmit bits are not incrementing. Let, let's see what happened to the counter. Okay. Counter is not incrementing as well. All right, let's check the code. Well, it turns out that we forgot something here. Check the process for the reset generation. By interpreting this code here, what we can say is that the reset is going to start at level 1, then after 2 clock periods, it's going to be 0, but then right after that, it's going to be 1 again. All right. So, ultimately, this reset signal is going to be 1 forever in this simulation. So, we forgot to wait here, okay? This wait here is a wait unconditionally, all right? And that means that the reset is going to remain zero forever because we this process waits after that forever, okay? All right, let's check anything else and copy that to Vivado. So here, and relaunch the simulation. Okay. So now let's simulate 500 nanoseconds and there you go. The, the symbols are changing. So let's in inspect here what happens. So by zooming here, we have the end of the reset signal right here. And then the next clock cycle starts here. Okay. And what we can see is that in this first clock cycle, the 2-bit count was 0, okay, and the output uh, and, and the corresponding bits in the input of the mapper was, were 0, 0 here, okay, and that, le le that led to plus 1 plus 1 out of the, the symbol mapper. In the next cycle, we have 0, 1, and that maps to minus 1 plus 1 in the, the symbol that is output. So that's a minus one in the real part and that J1 or plus one in the imaginary part. Then we have one zero in the input and plus one minus J1 in the output. And finally we have one one in the input as, as the binary input and minus one minus J1 in the output. So it seems that our block is behaving correctly. All right. Now, since now we have the mapper block already done, we should then proceed to implement the QEMD mapper block, and that's what we're going to do in the next video.